Millions of people all over the world struggle with chronic pain. Most of these people never find any permanent solutions, relying on aspirin or other pain medication. What many people never have a chance to learn is that not only can pain be the result of a physical injury, but it can also be caused by the wiring of the brain. In this short clip, Dr. Howard Schubner, physician and author of Unlearn Your Pain, a 28-day process to reprogram your brain, talks about how our emotional memories can actually create pain. You will look at what happens in the brain when someone is in pain and how that triggers the autonomic nervous system. you will also discuss the importance of the amygdala in this process. Dr. Schubner is interviewed by Dr. Ruth Kuzinski, licensed psychologist and president of the National Institute for the Clinical Application of Behavioral Medicine. I'd like to spend a little time talking about the amygdala. How does that play in what we're talking about here? Well, the amygdala is where emotional memory is stored. The hippocampus is the part of the brain where regular memories are stored. Mm -hmm. And there's one of the classic stories about that is there was a French physician who had a lady who had amnesia. She couldn't remember day to day. Every day he'd walk into her room, and this is uh, about 100 years ago, He'd walk into her room and he'd have to introduce himself. Who are you? You know, she wouldn't recognize him day by day. And he would shake her hand every day, right? So one day he walked into her room and he put a tack in his hand. And so when she took his hand, she got a, a prick from that sharp tack. The next day he walks in and she says, who are you? And he goes to shake her hand, but she wouldn't shake his hand. So that's the difference between kind of the regular memory, the hippocampus, and emotional memory the amygdala. And emotional memories are forever, whether they're conscious or subconscious. There's a strong connection between the ACC, the anterior cingulate cortex, and the amygdala, because the amygdala is also the center, not only of emotional memory, but of pain reaction. So when there's an injury, or there's a pain signal that goes to the brain, or a danger signal from something in the environment, if you see something that scares you, those fibers all go directly to amygdala. So now what you have in the amygdala is a confluence of emotional input, emotional memory, and pain fibers. This part of the brain is where, for the purposes of mind-body medicine, is such a key area because everything connects there. One last thing about the anterior cingulate cortex is, is that the ACC has been found to be activated by emotion, again, in neuroscience studies, particularly ones done by uh, Naomi Eisenberger at UCLA. What they've done, they have a, a model for inducing social exclusion. You're the subject, and you're staring at a computer screen, and on the computer screen are these two little creatures that are playing catch with a ball. And they're playing catch, and then they throw the ball to you. You have your hand on the screen. And then with a the mouse, you can click to throw the ball back to the person on the left or the person on the right. And so basically you're playing a game of catch on the computer screen. And then what they do is they have half the people, they socially exclude them. In other words, the two cyborg creatures start playing catch with each other and stop throwing the ball to you. And then they scan the brain of people in that situation, and when they get socially excluded, the ACC lights up. And in addition to that, what they've done is they then have tested their pain threshold. And as the ACC lights up, people have a lower pain threshold. In other words, more sensitive the pain. So the ACC and the amygdala work in conjunction in these situations where emotions are triggering and or perpetuating chronic pain. The amygdala then activates autonomic nervous system in the hypothalamus. An autonomic nervous system, the, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system, has fibers throughout the body. And when you think of it by systems, they can you have activation of specific muscle fibers. And so Specific muscle fibers that are activated by sympathetic nervous system output can create pain or muscle spasm or tension in any particular muscle group in the body. And it's amazing how specific it can be because people can have activation of one little muscle group right on the outside of the leg or on the top of the arm, or it can be more generalized, the whole shoulder area and the whole neck. Obviously, it can activate the nervous system, and when amygdala is activating autonomic nervous systems, the manifestations of that don't have to be pain, but can be anxiety, can be insomnia, can be ringing in the ears. And then, obviously, you talk about the GI system, the cardiovascular system, the urinary system. Virtually any system can be activated by the autonomic nervous system, which can produce what I call mind-body syndrome or physical manifestations of stress and emotions in people's lives.
There is so much more to learn about how our brain processes pain and how that affects our experience. You are welcome to join Dr. Schubner in a new teleseminar series, Clinical Applications of Psychoneuroimmunology. He will be interviewed on Modern Medicine's Blind Spot, the Mind-Body Syndrome of Pain. Sign up for this free series at www.nicabm.com slash teleseminar slash 2010. In addition to the teleseminar on pain, this series will address topics such as hypothyroidism, adrenal fatigue, sleep disorders, and more. This December, NICABM will host its 22nd International Psychology of Health, Immunity, and Disease Conference in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Practitioners will be attending from all over the country. Dr. Schubner will be presenting on the treatment of pain. Many other experts will present on topics such as the treatment of trauma, spirituality and healing, updates in neurobiology, and mindfulness meditation. We invite you to join us.